I want to I want to bring this text box over here so it kind of floats down underneath. I want to move this text box over so I've got text filling in this whole chunk. So and it's and it's it's kind of working but not really. Maybe what I'd really like to do is get a um, is get a get a little fade going on in here. Okay? And this is one of the main reasons why we link files in Photoshop. Um, uh, in InDesign and so if I go in here and I'm going to select on this guy and the links layer is right here this shows me everything that that's linked into this document so if I click on this guy it's gonna pop up which well, should pop up uh, there we go that's right, sorry if I double click on it it closes this this little icon here this little arrow if I open it up it gives me the name the format what page it's on the color space RGB at the moment the status of it's okay meaning that if it's linked or not the size the actual resolution the effective resolution to me what's what it's scaled to the dimensions all the information and it even gives me the scale what it's scaled out right now 125.8 if there's any transparency applied no at the moment so what we're gonna do is we're actually this is this is one of the fundamental things about about linking files number one gives you all the information right inside uh, your design file you don't have to go and open up each individual image to see what's going on number two it lets you uh, alter images on the fly so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna select this guy so I select this guy and notice this little pen guy right here if I click on this little pencil this is gonna allow me to open up Photoshop and edit this this uh, this actual image so I'm gonna click on this guy well, there's actually my my finished version just so you know so I'm gonna open up this guy here and it's gonna give me this preview mode because I've got my uh, my settings to to open up the camera raw uh, color information palette through JPEGs which is a real sweet thing so I'm gonna open this image up and I'm gonna go convert I'm actually going to get rid of this guy. I will save him. So this is my guy right here. And this, by the way, is something else I'm doing. I'm going to get rid of that. So what I have is my little iceberg here. So And the iceberg itself kind of fits in this space. So I want this iceberg to actually have a little gradient on it. So what, all I'm going to do is I'm going to, number one, I want to make this into a, right now it's a background. I want to make this into a layer. When I turn this into a layer, I can do all kinds of cool stuff to it. So I'm going to double click on that. I, mean, I can name it layer zero, layer one, super amazing, crazy iceberg layer. I can layer whatever. I'm just going to leave it zero. I'm going to go to OK. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to where? My Add Layer Mask. That guy right there. So I'm going to click on it. There's my layer mask. Okay. So now all I want to do is use a gradient and just go zoop and gradient that. So it just gets a nice little, little feather on it. The nice thing about doing it this way is that, number one, it's just a mask. And if I screw up, I can go back and do it again as many times. It's I'm not wrecking the image. Uh, what some people will show you is that you got to go in and physically you know to the actual picture erase away you know the bits and pieces that you want um, while you're erasing it after you erase it there's no going back so uh, using the gradient mask is way better and way faster so I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna click on that uh, that little gradient mask tool I'm gonna go to my gradient tool G for gradient I'm gonna go up here and make sure the gradient is set from black to white black erases there's black down here the white um, uh, reveals so just to make sure I'm going like from so I'm erasing to revealing so I'm gonna click basically and just drag out there's my gradient mask there's my feather there's my gradient mask there I can if I option click on or control click on this guy get the contextual menu I can go up I can disable it I can turn it off I can delete it I can apply it I can enable it so this is extremely flexible and it's non-destructive so now we have a layer it's not a JPEG anymore. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to go to save. And because it's just, I've turned it from a JPEG to a layer, it's going to say, well, what do you want to save it as? Well, I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file, PSD. That's very important. It has to be PSD, Photoshop. If I save it as anything else, it's not going to retain all this cool Photoshop stuff going on. It's just going to flatten it. It can turn it into other stuff. But for a working file, you want it to be a Photoshop file. So you get all your layers intact. So I'm going to tell it where to save it. So I'm just going to save it in my, my basic images bank. This is all the stuff that I've collected uh, through through the semester, through the years for uh, stuff to, to use in my classes. Um, so I'm just going to save it here. Save, maximize compatibility for sure. That way uh, people with uh, older versions of Photoshop can open this document up. I'm going to go OK. 
So now this is my iceberg. Okay, so now we're done. We'll close that. And I'm going to go back to my InDesign file. Now, right now, it hasn't done anything because, well, it's the JPEG. And what I did was I made this JPEG into a PSD file. So I got to go back here. I'm just going to select it. I'm going to make sure this is selected. This is still selected here because I've got my, my box here. And I'm going to Command D again. And I'm just going to go in here and find my Photoshop file. And it doesn't have to. I don't, I'm going to turn this off because I don't really need it. Uh, go OK. It's going to update it. Boom. Done. You see the color shifted over a bit because Photoshop files display a bit cleaner and, and better than uh, than uh, than JPEGs. Um, if I want to do a high res version, I can click on this and I can go Control, get my contextual menu up. This will fly down, so I've got all the the information about you know effects. I can apply transparencies off here. I can edit original, which would open up the Photoshop file. I can edit with a gazillion different whatever applications you have. Interactivity, I can make it a button. Display performance. Fast performance, will, fast display will give me just a gray box. Um, a typical display will give me just a regular low res preview. High display will give me a nice, clean, crisp, rendered version. So now I've got this nice, cool, um, cool gradient going on. And I'm just going to pop this off for a second so you guys can see. So now what we got is we got some text up here, we got a title, we got a subhead, we got everything going, all the text flowing through, and now we've got this nice, nice little little transparency uh, uh, gradation going on. Um, so really, all we have to do now is take care of some of the some of the formatting options, um, and we're going to cover that uh, in another lesson. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed it.